Let us offer our consecration to the Lord. Lord, we offer up to you this day as we return to ordinary time, as we return to the color green for our regular masses, and as we continue in the spirit that we learn from Lent through Easter, and we continue for the rest of the year in this very unique time of our church and our service to you. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Well, as you heard, today is, in fact, ordinary time. We are in the 10th week of ordinary. So it's Monday of the 10th week. So we can go back to uh, really the last time we had ordinary time was the Monday and Tuesday before uh, Ash Wednesday. So here we are. In the 10th week of Ordinary Time, this will continue, as I always explain to you, for approximately 24 weeks. No, definitely, for a complete 24 weeks. It'll uh, continue right up until, uh, um, what is it, Uh, just just after Thanksgiving. So this this is actually my favorite season, and the reason is because it's all there. It's just, so get into a routine, this is the way we do things, this is how we do it, and it just makes things so much easier. So... Uh, This is year uh, A of Ordinary Time. Now, what does that mean? Well, there are three Sunday years, years A, B, and C. And so A, B, and C is Matthew is year A, uh, Mark is year B, and Luke is year C. And then the Gospel of John is mixed up with all of those. Uh, We are in, actually I said year A, we're in year two, and so the weekday masses are divided into two years, odd and even. So it's year two, why? Because it's 2022, it's an even year, therefore we work with year two. One of the things that I do, and I've done this in every parish I go to, is the book of readings for the year um, is there's one for year two and another one for year one. So once we hit the book of readings for the new year, I hide the other one so we can never get them mixed up. And so we are in year two for our daily readings. And where we are today, we're beginning with the uh, book of Kings. Now, we're not beginning with the actual beginning of the book. We're beginning with the story of Elijah the Tishbite. Elijah is the famous uh, prophet who you see at the Transfiguration. He's the most powerful prophet, maybe with the exception of Moses, but they would be on equal footing, I'd guess. He's the most powerful prophet of the Old Testament. But he lived during a time where he was dealing with the most evil queen of the Old Testament. So I think we can get an idea that the Lord raises up people who match the challenge that is there because the queen was queen jezebel a fascinating story about her and we're going to see that as we go along she is literally the most evil woman in the old testament well that would make her the most evil woman in the bible she was a phoenician woman and the um, basically people into biblical archaeology will also call her Uh, a member of the Sea Peoples. The Phoenicians, you probably knew about the Phoenicians. They were great sailors and they were great boat makers and and everything else. Well, they were also known as the Sea Peoples and she was a Phoenician. Now, it's important to understand this. She married uh, Ahab. He was Jewish. Well, actually, a, a better way to put that is he was a Hebrew Remember why I say that. It's the same people, but I used the term Hebrew prior to the division of the kingdoms, and Israel or Judah were the two kingdoms, or actually, and Judah would be a better way to express it. And then uh, after the fall of Israel, there is only Judah, and it's from the name Judah that we have the term Jew. So obviously before Judah, uh, as the sole kingdom that remains, I usually use the, one of several terms. Hebrews up until uh, the time of Israel, and then after the time of Israel, we can call them either Israelis, or we can call them from Judah, Judahites, or we can call them. And then after that, we call them Jews. Now, today, that same 
country that was once called Israel and that was a united country is again called Israel and it's united country. And so we see that one country that was the same as that one country under David. David was the greatest king of Israel. Prior to him was Saul, who was the first king of Israel. And now we're going well before this to the time of Elijah. And we have Elijah the prophet. I'm sorry, we're going well after this. Did I say for, before this, we're going after this? Because we have King Ahab. If he is a king, he is after David, unless his name is Saul. He was the king before David. So we have King Ahab. And a lot of the kings were corrupt. There is the um, time of Hezekiah, where there was great reform. But a lot of the kings were corrupt, Ahab was no different. And one of the things that's important is, as I said, he married Jezebel. Well, he married her for political reasons, and it was to be able to do business well with the sea peoples and be be able to do business well. It was almost like an alliance that helped form that. So once you start doing that, then you're turning away from the Lord to fulfill political alliances. And so that's always going to cause problems. Jezebel had absolutely no loyalty to God. She had loyalty to her God, which was Baal. And we see all of that play itself out in the time of Elijah. We're going to talk more on the other side of the break. You're listening to uh, St. Anthony Overnight from St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts, right here on WEZE. I want to call your attention to Catholic TV, which offers great faith-filled, family-friendly programming 24 hours a day. You can find your cable channel at www.getcatholictv.com, and you can watch online on the free apps or check out the YouTube channel. Daily Mass, Rosaries, the Divine Mercy Chaplet, and the Our Lady of Perpetual Help Novena are all available online and on demand. Check out CatholicTV.com. And don't forget our own website, CatholicAudioMedia.com. That's CatholicAudioMedia.com. And check out our website. If you want to give us some feedback, we'd really appreciate it. If you'd like to donate to the show, and we'll talk about that at the end of the show, we'd really appreciate that well. But do us a favor and let other people know you listen to the program. Spread the word. Uh, tweet out the program. We tweet. You can follow us at Alston Saint. Alston Saint, if you happen to be a tweeter, uh, and you can do that. As you know, I'm really not big into social media. I do use Reddit. I do use Twitter a little bit because you can get into these big fights on social media. I really try to be careful not to. So anyway, we are here discussing this powerful message of the very beginning of Elijah. And so this is the very beginning, and Elijah is the Tishbite. And at this point, he is speaking to King Ahab. And one of the issues that's happening is there is a famine that is coming to uh, the country because of a drought. So we see this story. And this was really going to lay the scene for us of what is coming up for this whole week. But the focus, again, is in Elijah. Now, Elijah has an interesting reputation because he is the only prophet who did not uh, actually uh, die. He was assumed into heaven. If we take a look at that, he was assumed into heaven, so therefore he did not die. Now, I was in Brazil, and there was a man there, uh, Professor Felipe Equino, Brazilian, He's and he is a professor, and he it does this question and answer program on Consul Nova TV, the, the community that Father Adriano Zandana and I belong to. And one of the things he brought out in, in this question and answer program is the question was, was Elijah brought into heaven? And he said, no, because the gates of heaven weren't open yet. So his explanation was no, even though he was assumed, no, so therefore not into heaven, he was assumed into what we often use the term limbo, into that place where people go or went when they couldn't get into heaven. That's what he explained. So, But it's important to know that he did not die. That is the reason why uh, Jesus, when he asked who many people thought 
um, he was, some people responded Elijah because they thought either Jesus was Elijah or they thought John the Baptist was Elijah. Why? Because Elijah did not die. And therefore, Elijah has come back. That's basically what people thought of John the Baptist. Elijah has come back. So it is always that question. Now, we don't actually believe that Elijah actually did come back in John the Baptist. That would be what we call reincarnation. We believe in the incarnation, which is Jesus being incarnated. But we don't believe in reincarnation, which is that you live, uh, anyone could live more than one life. And that would mean that Elijah lived more than one life. So we don't believe that. But that was one of the questions at the time. This John the Baptist, is this so? Elijah come back? And that's a normal question people would ask. And so uh, it was determined no. But we see all this come together and we see all these things that play itself out. And that's why it's important uh, as I'm kind of setting the scene for the story of Elijah, because a lot of Elijah shows up later. Jesus talks about him. Jesus meets him at the transfiguration. He represents this powerful prophet that takes on the most evil person, the most evil woman in the Old Testament, Queen Jezebel. We see all of this come together, and it's all focused on this one powerful man who was Elijah. And we're going to talk more tomorrow about how all that plays itself out in another story that Jesus talks about. And so we see all of that with this one powerful story, one powerful man, actually, as we begin again ordinary time with the 10th week of ordinary time this week. You have yourself a blessed week. We will talk to you again tomorrow. And don't forget to pass the word. Let people know. And don't forget to send us feedback. You can even mail it to us. There's information on that coming up. Have a blessed day. If you would like to support our program, please consider a donation to St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts. There are several ways to consider this. One is to purchase any of our merchandise, which you can find at the shopping tab at catholicaudiomedia.com. That's catholicaudiomedia.com. There are coffee mugs there. There's also my latest book, Encounter Christ in Your Humanity, all of which you can find at the shopping tab at catholicaudiomedia.com. You can also donate to the show directly through either the Donate tab, also at CatholicAudioMedia.com, or by sending a donation through the U.S. Postal Service with your questions and comments at 43 Holton Street, Alston, Massachusetts, 02134. That's St. Anthony Parish, 43 Holton Street, Alston, Massachusetts, 02134. Finally, the best way you can support our parish is to attend Mass on Sundays at 10 o'clock and be a part of our parish. We thank you for any support you would like to give to St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts, the sponsoring parish for this media outreach to Catholics and other Christians in the WROL, WEZE, and podcast listening audience. In Cristo vivimos.